In this video, we are going to make this awesome and beautiful ashtray. Stick around. Hello everyone and welcome to my shop. This is the second video of our 5 easy CNC projects. In the previous video, we made a key hanger using the contouring technique. So if you haven't watched that one already, I will leave the link in the description. In this video, we are going to make an ashtray using the pocketing technique. This ashtray has two parts, a top and a bottom, which an ashtray insert sits inside it. So first thing first, we need to design both bottom and the top. Let me quickly say that my measurements are based on the ashtray insert that I'm using, and you need to modify your design based on yours. Let's design the bottom part first. My stock is 6 inches by 6 inches, and the thickness is an inch and a quarter. I want my final product to be 4 and a 3 quarter by 4 and a 3 quarter inches, and I fill it around the corners with a quarter of an inch radius. Then I need a circle inside of this square. The circle needs to be carved out, so the ashtray insert sits inside of it. I figured that a 1.97 inches radius would be the best fit for my insert. I need to pocket two small circles with a radius of 0.2 inches in two opposite corners. These circles are for magnets to hold top and bottom together. Now, let's create some toolpaths. What we need to do is pocket the big circle, pocket the small circles, and cut out the outer shape. First, I'm going to create the toolpath for the big circle, but I will do it in two steps, meaning two different toolpaths. The first toolpath will dish out most of the wood, and the second toolpath is a final pass for a smooth finish. I am going to use a bowl and tray bit for this toolpath. The bowl and tray bit is pretty much like a straight bit, but with rounded corners. I will leave a link in the description for the one that I'm using. Eventually, I want to dish out to the depth of 0.95 inches. So I create a rough pocketing tool with higher values for a step over and depth per pass from the surface to 0.9 inches and a finish pass pocketing from 0.9 to 0.95 inches. Next, I'm going to create a tool path for the small circles. The circles are 0.2 inches in radius. That means I need to use one eighth of an inch end mill to do the pockets. I reduce the plunge and feed rates since these are very delicate pockets. These circles will accommodate magnets, so the max depth needs to be set based on the magnet's depth, which in this case is 0.12 inch. Finally, I need to cut out the outer shape, so I create a contour toolpath. I choose quarter of an inch end mill for this toolpath. I set the step over, depth per pass, plunge, and feed rate value, and the max depth is going to be my stock bottom. And finally, the offset direction needs to be set to outside. I create four tabs for work holding, and by that we are done with toolpaths. Let's check out the simulation, and that's exactly what we want, so we are good to go. The design of the top part is very similar to the bottom. Basically, there are two differences. First, the material thickness of the top is one inch, comparing to one and a quarter inches for the bottom. Also, the radius of the big circle is two inches, 
for the top comparing to 1.97 inches for the bottom. And that's because we don't want a snug fit for the top. The tool paths are almost identical, we only need to set the depths of the cuts accordingly. Then let's just fire up the Shapeoko, zero out our axes and start cutting. So apparently my quarter of an inch end mill is not at its sharpest state and it left some burn marks on our ashtray. So some sanding is required to remove those marks. I glued the magnets and for some reason I don't have the footage of that. For the finish I'm gonna choose the easiest option and I'm going to use some mineral oil. I will let it sit and soak as much as it can and I will come back and wipe off any excess. And by that we are done. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one.